Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on the topic of distribution of income and wealth. Last lesson we learned the definitions and some formulas related to this topic. I have a link to that in the description below. We learned that the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient are tools used to measure the extent of income and wealth inequality in the economy. As you can see in this graph, we can use the Gini coefficient to observe the trends and their causes. For example, we saw income inequality rise quite sharply as we approached 2007. Some explanations include the peak of the mining boom on top of some labor market deregulation policies. This is because high income earners and high wealth households benefited from this boom more than poorer households. Compared to lower income earners, they had more valuable skill sets, access to growing export markets and more productive resources and assets. This gives them more bargaining power and causes their incomes and net assets to increase faster than those with already low income and wealth. Therefore, the income and wealth gaps increased with the economic boom. As you can also see here, this was reversed when we entered the GFC. The rich saw more significant drops in income compared to lower income households. Therefore, the gap was narrowed and the Gini coefficient was reduced. You'll see similar trends in the distribution of wealth as well. So that's how you use the Gini coefficient to unpack some of the trends over time. You can refer to these movements when you're writing essays on the causes and effects of income and wealth inequality. Next, I want to talk about the dimensions of inequality. This means that we're gonna look at inequality in between different groups in various categories. This will give us insight for some of the causes for income and wealth inequality. One of the main causes of income inequality is household wealth. That is, high wealth households often earn higher incomes and low wealth households have lower incomes. This is because high income earners have the ability to accumulate assets and pay off debt quicker, so they have higher net assets or wealth. And since wealth is often in the form of assets that can generate a return, such as investment property or other financial investments, high wealth households have the ability to generate higher incomes. So you see how income and wealth often go hand in hand. And that's one of the reasons that inequality often worsens over time. Another obvious differentiator of income is occupation. Groups in high skilled professional occupations will earn a higher income compared to unskilled labor. It also depends on the industry too, whether there's high demand relative to supply of workers. The next differentiator is related, the level of education. Those with higher qualifications are often associated with higher skills and productivity, giving them access to higher paying occupations. Whether a worker has a physical or mental disability could impact their ability to earn a higher income, as it could limit their productivity or access to training and education. Next, income usually increases with age and peaks at the 45 to 54 age group. That's because workers can accumulate skills, experience and qualifications over time. And after this age group, the average income falls because older workers start to retire and leave the workforce. Differences in income can also be seen between the genders. Statistics show that males earn a higher income than females. And this wage gap has been falling steadily since 2014. Here are some causes for this pay gap, according to the Australian government's Workplace Gender Equality Agency. Ethnicity is also a determinant for differences in income, but it's not as simple as migrants get a lower pay. See, migrants with non-English speaking backgrounds and indigenous Australians make up some of the lower income groups. But if the migrant is from an English speaking background, they often earn a higher income than the average Australian. That's probably because they wouldn't even come to Australia from the English speaking country in the first place if they weren't promised a higher income. And just like with ethnicity, geographical location as an income differentiator doesn't come down to a simple statement as those in rural areas are poorer. It is indeed true that rural areas have lower average household incomes compared to urban areas, but rural workers can actually get paid a higher wage for the same job in urban areas. For example, some nurses or teachers are offered higher incomes to work in rural areas than in urban areas because the supply of nurses and doctors are scarce in rural areas. Lastly, family structures can also impact household income. Households with single parents have the lowest incomes, Couples without children have the highest average incomes. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand some of the trends in income and wealth inequality. Next lesson, I'm going to continue the series by looking at some of the effects of inequality. Subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, as well as share the video too. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.